Welcome to Dizzy Red Panda, a podcast all about all the crafting projects that make us dizzy with excitement. I'm Katie. I'm from Duluth, Minnesota, and I'm known on Instagram and Ravelry as Nerdy in Plaid. And I'm Cheryl, just outside St. Paul, Minnesota, on Ravelry is Red and Instagram is Red Knitter. Show notes and links can be found just down below. Um, and always, if you have any questions or if we need to clarify anything, because I feel like we often need to clarify things, but people are too polite to ask, um, there you can always contact us too. All right, so we have we are now a month out, and that was because I was sick last time, and so that you were was more just, than sick. Yeah, you I was were... still in bed by the time we were supposed to be podcasting. So yeah, it was rough. That would have been unpleasant for everyone involved to be included with. So we're coming back a month later, and we'll see what's happening. Uh, I feel like we need to do a weather report because that's what we're all about now. Yes, um, it's very windy. It is very windy from at both of our places. Um, did you introduce yourself? Yeah. Okay. I totally missed that. I'm sure. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, it's really, <laughs> we're a hundred and some miles, like 150 miles apart. Uh, but it's both for both of us. It's super windy today. So I apologize if you're getting some background noise. I'll try to deal with it, yeah. but I don't think it's going to happen. So. Yeah, my husband was out blowing snow this morning, and we have like a riding tractor snowblower thing. So it's pretty fast. He wasn't out there that long. He came in, face was completely red, and then his neck was completely red too, just from wind burn. It was Oh, red. that's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, as I was driving down the highway on my way home this morning, my car was blowing kind of moving back and forth granted I drive a tiny car but still it there was enough movement on the highway so yeah you had other thing exciting things happened while we were right. on break <laughs> on break yeah we'll call it on break well between what would have been our last episode and this episode um yeah I have a two-year-old now that's pretty amazing so it's officially a, he's officially a toddler He's officially a toddler. I mean, he has been toddling for nearly a year. Yes. <laughs> over half a year. So we've called him a toddler since then. But yeah, he's like a kid now. He is definitely not a baby. <laughs> so that's pretty crazy. So, but we had his birthday party last weekend and it was really good. We had, you know, some close friends and family come out, you know, because it's a two-year-old birthday party. Of course. That's what so. you do. Yeah, so basically it was like, come over, have cake, and watch him play with stuff. That was our party. But That's pretty the amazing. cake had so many sprinkles. <laughs> I saw your... Did you either text me a picture or did you put it up on Instagram? On that was on Instagram. Okay. So I, you can get these tubs that are like like this around and a couple inches tall. At, like a you know, pint a of sprinkles. Yeah, like a pint of sprinkles. Well, I got two of them. Just be safe. <laughs> And I didn't even use one whole one. Like, there's still some left over from the one. But I did a homemade funfetti cake. Nice. So it had sprinkles inside and then mm -hmm. bright orange between the layers. Of course. And then on the outside, I did it all in white. But then all along the outside were sprinkles smashed against the side of it. Which, if you were looking to sprinkle a cake, I have a Pinterest tip for you. Because... A lot of websites will tell you to just like scoop it onto the side. That's, That's insane. That's messy. That's insane. No, do and it doesn't even work. Is the thing. Okay. So don't do that. <laughs> but what you do is you cut a piece of. I used freezer paper, but you could use tin foil or wax paper or whatever. You spray some baking spray on it, and then you hmm. dip it into a shallow plate of sprinkles, ah. and it picks them up enough, and then you smash that. That's amazing. It's amazing. It was very fast to do it that way. Minimally messy. I was pretty pleased with how it turned out. But then on top, it had, I stenciled out uh, an uppercase letter E because that was the theme of the of party. The letter E. He's very <laughs> into the letter E. And so I stenciled that out and just filled that with sprinkles too. I think you're ready to be on a baking show. This is my second decorated cake. So I think so. 
that you absolutely <laughs> got your second decorated cake. And I think it absolutely counts to belong on the show because it's multi-craftual. Like, that's a major... I thought it bore mentioning, and I did learn something new. So last year I had done a bear cake, and that was my first <laughs> decorated <laughs> cake. And it was cute, and it was easy and everything. It was more sculptural. So this year, I mean, I did learn the sprinkle thing, but my mom took a cake decorating class when we were very little, and we always had these amazing oh. every year. And and she's like, she's always had very nice handwriting, and like she's just... <laughs> positioned well to do this and she like she remembers all of it from this class that's good so this time I learned how to do I keep calling it the shell stitch but it's not (laughs) because it's frosting right but I learned how to make the little shell around the bottom of the cake this year that was my my new skill in addition to sprinkling I would say those are two major skills I think so I'm pretty pretty well set and I'm sure I'll learn something new next year (laughs) and it will be interesting to see how you decorate it for next year yeah, we'll see what he's into then. I I was pretty sure about this letter E thing a couple months out because I was like, that sounds mighty easy to me and that's what I'm all about <laughs> right now. Um, but next year I could see doing something uh, a little crazier. Absolutely. We'll Dinosaurs and or trains. Likely, likely <laughs> choices. Yes. Um, you also look nice and warm and cozy today. I wanted to make sure that you talk about what you're wearing. Oh, yeah. I'm going to see if this shawl lasts the episode because, honestly, I'm a little bit warm today. But this is my um, copycat shawl. Oh, yeah. Which is um, a pattern based on a paparazzi photo of Catherine Middleton in the grocery store from several years ago that I had to make. Um, Mm -hmm. Out of Fresco, which is one of my very favorite yarns, which Mm -hmm. means that because it's got alpaca and angora in it, it is very, very warm. So we'll see if it lasts the whole episode. All right. Well, and you know, Classic Lead is going out of business, so... Oh, really? Buy out while you can. Yeah. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, it's kind of disappointing. What I get for being out of touch. <laughs> this is what you get for not being, not following all of the major yarn stores. <laughs> so... I consider that a good thing. Do you guys still have I'm not wearing anything handmade today, so I'm going to just skip on over that. But I thought we should jump into um, FOs because, well, I have several. Let's just be honest. I bet you've built some up over our month. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want you to share what you did first because that looks, that sounds incredibly cute. Well, I'm going to have to have you put in a photo, if you don't mind, because this has already been given away. And even if we had recorded on time, it already would have been given away. So I made a Journey of the Aviator hat for a baby shower (laughs) a few weeks ago, which is like a crazy popular pattern on Ravelry. It's adorable. It's adorable. Um, It's especially adorable because the new parents are a pilot and a flight attendant. Oh, yes. They needed this hat. Of course. For sure. So this is my second time making this one. I made one for my own son, and it was very cute on him. It also doubled as a lumberjack hat. Yes. Um, So that that was handy. Lumberjack hats and aviator hats are pretty much the same hat. Very handy. Uh, So I I basically just did the same thing in different colors. I once again made the preemie size because the pattern runs large, and that did fit my son when he was, like, nine months old for Halloween. Wow. Yeah, so... I would definitely size down on that one. Okay. And that wasn't my idea. That was Ravelry's idea. That was crowdsourced <laughs> information. <laughs> it's one of them in my, it's, uh, it's one of the hats in my queue. And so I yeah. really do love that one. Yes. It's super cute. And I make mine even cuter. I humbly <laughs> suggest by adding a lining. I've done this to both of them so oh. that it looks like shearling on the inside of the actual bomber hat. So I do the outside as written and then I have notes on my the first okay. one which I'll have you link as well if you don't mind yep. for how I do that shearling on the inside. So I basically make another half hat except I do it in a moss stitch so that it looks kind of bumpy. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because in both cases I've just had smooth cream yarns yep. on hand. 
And then I crochet them together around the edges. Oh, that's a really easy way to do that. Yeah. It's really easy. And it, it's a, such a small hat that it doesn't take long anyway. And I think it has a really cute effect. Good. Yeah, that sounds cute. So I finished. So the things that I'm showing today um, need pom-poms, but they haven't been given pom-poms. Um, I haven't. Did you pom- find your pom-pom maker? Yes, I did. I have no, okay. I know I have like two sets of pom-pom makers, so I have an obnoxious amount, but yeah, I cleaned up my desk area and I found it. So thank goodness. Yes. I'm like, I'm not buying a third <laughs> for the, I had lost like the blue, the light blue, um, pom-pom maker. And so the green one was just going to be too small. So you can't have too small of a pom-pom. No, that won't do. Not at all. So here's the, so this is an FO from, um, that I finished from last time. So let's do it like this. So this is the Escher hat by Sarah Setters. Um, I made this out of Cascade 220. So it's a white, well, it's really a cream and a charcoal, not a black. Um, my notes on this are, holy hell, this hat is tall. (laughs) So let me put it on a head so you can see how it is whoops let me back up just a little bit it is that's tall does it look that tall in the pattern page it's slouchy in the pattern page but I don't feel like it's that tall like they did a very good job photographing it Mm -hmm. um so I really like this pattern and I will make it again so I'm gonna just go through so it starts with chevrons and then those QB things with shadows are my favorite pattern. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, and then it goes into this, I don't know, at the top. Other QB things. <laughs> and then it has, uh, I missed a little bit. I've got some gray popping through. But guess what? A pom-pom is going to cover that. But it has a really Ew. cute, yeah. So, pom-pom on top. Nice. That's cute. And that... <laughs> So when I say I like really big pom-poms, I really do mean it. This is the m- almost the rest of the skein of Cascade. Well, great. Now you took yeah. care of your leftovers. Good job. Exactly. <laughs> Though, to be fair, for wool leftovers, I put them into a, ba- into a bag, and then when I have a whole bunch of them, I'll rewind them and make them into dryer balls is what I do with them. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So next time I make this, because there will be a next time, I'm going to cut out some of the rows throughout yeah. I'll probably probably cut out between 10 and 20 rows um but it was a great pattern I would say this is a really good pattern um to get you started on color work because there aren't long floats I think at the most there are like four stitches for floats and it works really really well it's a great it charted pattern as well so I really really liked this hat This is not going to be worn by me because it looks really kind of stupid on me, to be honest. Uh, But it will find, it will go into the gift basket and somebody will like it. Um, Since I was on an Escher kick, um, I also made Escher by Ella Austin. (laughs) Same name. There are actually a lot of Escher type patterns. But this one is a bit more graphic. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is a DK pattern t dk weight pattern but i used worsted just because that's what i wanted to knit with and so this is um patents in uh patents classic wool in a navy blue it's a little bit hard to tell um in this light um and then i use the cream as well and it will get a mixed pom-pom yay yeah so this one fits much more like a beanie and a normal sized hat <laughs> which I appreciate. (laughs) Again, this one was really nicely written, but the floats in the middle got a little bit long. But I really do like how it turned out. I think it has a really pretty top as well. Yes. And so even though I'm putting a pom-pom on it, I'm like, I really, I kind of dig how that top is done. So this is, this was a great pattern as well. This one's a little bit damp because I only blocked it yesterday. The last hat pattern that I did, I can't believe I did something trendy, like super trendy. <laughs> the, this is a True North Toque by Made by Marley. It's out of super bulky. So I had to buy both 13, uh, US 13 needles and US 15 needles because I didn't own any. 
<laughs> I've decided that I don't like doing magic loop. Or I don't like use, doing color work on magic loop, if at all possible. I don't like doing anything on magic loop. Just I might color make that hat. It's a, it has a folded brim, which is, yeah. which I'm kind of really dig. And I do it where you don't need to provisionally cast on. You pick yeah. up at the brim. Anyway, so this is a really cute, so I pulled it down really far to kind of show this a little bit better. So I bought five skeins of yarn total. <laughs> so it's this color. I brought two of the this color, like this taupey oatmeal color. And then there's black, red, and like this burgundy color. Mm -hmm. that you buy. And I had enough yarn for from the color work left over that I ended up doing four hats. <laughs> so I did two hats with a folded brim and then I did two hats with a ribbing as well. So I'm not going to show all four of those hats because that's excessively boring. And then they're all going to be topped with Yes. Seriously, I cop I exactly copied what the pattern did. I had no inspiration whatsoever. So um Perfect. I have a whole bunch of like these brown ones, so I'm going to put them on. Again, haven't gotten around to it. I did want to talk a little bit about this pattern. It's charted, and it's a really nice, easy, easy pattern. Um, I could, you know, in a long evening, I could get this done. Um, yeah. I usually broke it up where I did like the brim in one evening and then the color work in another evening. Um, just because I have other things happening. But it's a really nicely written pattern. Here's my problem with it. There are no decreases written. You snug all of the stitches up at the very top of the hat. Um, I like decreases. I do. I get really picky about decreases. And so, you know, drawstringing like 40 ish stitches, um, even it doesn't work for me. I no. think even when it's after it's blocked, you can see the puckering at the top. And I, and even though it's covered by a pom-pom, I was not a fan of that. So I rewrote the, I rewrote some decreases and I put those in my Ravelry page. So you can see those. And it's, I just added three rows. So it is a little bit longer, but you know what? I don't think it's enough to notice. So I just wrote some decreases into the pattern. Mm -hmm. and it works just so that was my only disappointment about it and I hadn't opened the pattern to read it or anything of that nature and so I was disappointed especially for what I paid for it I was like really I had to like figure out my own decreases okay mm -hmm. yeah. um she does have really good instructions for doing the uh picking up the brim and doing a folded brim though she has some really nice images there I just feel like it should have been all real, well rounded that's just a personal yeah. thing though all right, last thing I did. Um, I made a shawl. This one didn't take very long. So let me hold this up. Ooh. It's a forest green. It's a long one. So this is half. So it is actually my wingspan. It is... Um, the Familiar Shawl by Helen Stewart, so Curious Handmade, and it is from one of her Shawl Society series. I don't remember which one it is, but I bought them all, so I really like them. This one's really nice. It has a really nice cable texture to it Cute. every once in a while. So it's, um, it's a really nicely written pattern, and it's out of bulky weight yarn or chunky yarn. So I used one skein of Cascade Eco Plus in colors 8002. It's a forest green color. like. And then she wanted, I made this larger because I had more yarn. And then she has a really pretty ribbed-ish, I guess, edging. And I didn't want to rework that. <laughs> so I just put a garter stitch edge on. So I really like this. This has actually been wrapped around my neck and my face a lot um, yeah. in the last couple of weeks. I bet. Because it is nice and toasty. Um, if you never worked with Eco before, it is a little 
rustic feeling on the hands. Nothing like a piece fleece or something of that nature, but it does feel a little bit rustic, but it blocks out beautifully. I never had an issue with that. I do wish that um, I had followed the pattern in the needle size. She wanted you to use a 6.5 millimeter, so that's at least a 10.5 needle, US needle. Um, I only had a 10 on hand. So I used a 10 and I just did a gravity block, which means that I hung it on a gull wing dryer and it worked fine. But I kind of wish, I still feel like it's kind of dense. Mm. So I wish I had either knitted on an 11 and I'm not going to rip it out because I've already ripped it out. Um, Cause I miscounted. I was having issues with my stitch count. So I just ripped the whole thing out and re it. And then so I think I'm going to use blocking wires on this and actually give it a good old block and leave some of the water. I'm not going to like spin out all of the water either so that some of that water stays in. So I have a little bit more room to stretch, but overall, this is a gorgeous pattern and I love her patterns and it was kind of nice. She has a couple of bulky weight shawls that I will absolutely use and knit. So I like them a lot. So that's what I finished in a month. A whole bunch of hats, but look, I'm branching out. I'm proud of you. <laughs> so what kinds of things are you working on? I am continuing to work on my Lillian cardigan and it now has sleeves. Yay! Too. You have, yeah. is that all of the pieces done now? That is not all of the pieces because cookie pocket don't forget. Well, of course. I'm sorry. I forgot about the pockets. But the major pieces are done. The major pieces okay. are done. Uh, and the first pocket is nearly done. I was just working on this while I was watching TV last night. So nice. that'll be done in no time. Um, what's going to take me a little while is that I haven't woven in all of my little ends. Because remember, the alpaca is recycled from a different yep. sweater project. Uh, so there are a whole lot of ends that I just left because I was like, oh, if I need to rip something, I don't want to deal with uh, unpicking woven in ends. So I just left all of them. So I'm going to have to have a beverage and a movie to do that. <laughs> I think because there really are, there are a lot of ends that are going to be dealt with there. Um, so I'll have to do that before I seam it together. Nice. But seaming is going to be the only finishing work because it has that knit on band that's already. Nice. Um, so that yeah. makes it really nice. And I mean, it's practically done. It's practically done. You just need to finish another pocket and the seaming. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going well. And it's, it's such an easy pattern. Like, oh, good. It's just really low maintenance knitting. Like the sleeves are um, sort of a drop shoulder yeah. design and they're just angle in at a steady rate. Oh, that's really forever. Really, like the, really the whole thing has that. just been really basic. So I've appreciated that. That is really nice. Yeah. Um, should I go with one of the things I'm working on? Yeah, you go next. Okay. So um, I'm working on, whoops, that was a dropped stitch and I don't want that. Um, I'm working on Calisti by Hilary Callis Smith. I really like her patterns. I have several of them. Okay. I've done the star shower cowl. So you start it as a, it's a, scowl so it starts out as a shawl and then you join it together in the round um and this is Khaleesi is the same thing so let me back up because it has grown so I was out of town for uh Thursday and Friday of last week uh for a work trip and I wanted something to take with me that wouldn't be overly complicated and so I started this on Monday just so that I could get working on it um needless to say by the time I left it was too big, so this is not a project I brought with me. But so this is a cowl. Mm -hmm. it doesn't look like much. I made it a little bit bigger, so you can see at the angle. So it's going to be nice and squishy. Mm -hmm. um, the yarn I'm using for this is an alpaca, which is Rowan brushed fleece, brushed alpaca. Looks fleece. very cozy. Yeah, it is really nice and cozy. I've used this yarn before, and it is super toasty. So I'm using a size 11 and it's going to be airy, especially once it blocks out, but it's going to be really nice and warm. I really like this yarn too, because it comes in really pretty colors, but again, it has a really interesting construction. So you can see there, eh, you can't see, but it, it is kind of a single ply, but it is fold, 
but you can't really tell that it's single ply. Um, it's a really lightweight yarn. So in 50 grams, so this is a 50 gram ball, it has 115 yards in it. <laughs> so it's one of those yarns that, okay, so if I have 100 grams, that's 230 yards, which gets into like DK weight if you're going strictly by yardage, but it's a bulky <laughs> because it's nice and air. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a beautiful yarn and I really like it. Um, the other thing that I'm working on this, um, oh, it's also really nicely priced. So I needed two of these and I think they were priced at under $14 a ball. And so if you're using a big bulky, you know, and you want alpaca, like one skein is going to make a really nice cowl. Yeah. So, um, I really, really enjoy this yarn. This is a really great value. Um, and a, it's a really great quality yarn too. I always have really liked Rowan yarns. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, the thing I'm not liking right now is bubbles. So I don't know if you have this, but I have a mental list of knitting techniques that I'm okay if I never ever do in my entire life. <laughs> Intarsia is one of them. I'm good with not doing it. Uh, Bobbles was also on that list because I thought they were kind of tedious to do, having never done them. Um, I have determined they are indeed as tedious as I thought. So here's one of them. Um, whoops, there we are. So they're pretty, ooh, there we are. Um, so they're a big bobble, and thank goodness I only have to do one row of bobbles, but that's 56 bobbles for me that are gonna take forever. I'm not really excited about it. And I'm why, gonna complain about it. Why are you making a pattern with bobbles? Because I really fell in love with the pattern and I liked the texture part that was down towards the edge. Okay. And I thought it was maybe more of a mesh pattern. I didn't read that closely enough. I didn't look at the tags on Ravelry where it said bobbles. <laughs> and when I looked at it closer in the pattern page, I, there was a bit of knitter denial there. And then yeah, I got okay. to the section Fair. where it's clearly labeled bobble section. And I couldn't get around it. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the row of bobbles, of 56 bobbles. I am also knitting backwards on this, so I don't have to flip it back and forth, uh, which does make it easier, but no less tedious. Yeah. It's a well-written pattern. It's just a personal thing, how I feel about bobbles. Right. I keep telling myself it will be worth it, but. I hope it is. I hope so. I think once I'm done with it, I'll be happy. Maybe once I'm done with this row, I'll be happy with it. Yeah. Anyway. What else are you working on? I really do like the pattern overall. It's just this row. Good. <laughs> okay. I have one other project going right now. And that. Ooh. So I, I believe we call awesome. this a hoe. Yes. Because it is half finished. So last time you saw it, I had mm -hmm. like just started in on um on the beeswax pattern and so i figured out how to deal with a full thumb because nice this is originally a mitt pattern so it has just a partial um, oh got it rib thumb so this has a full thumb on it is that um, ribbed or stockinette it is ribbed in the original pattern and okay. stockinette here okay i just wanted because to i thought it would be weird to have a ribbed thumb so it's not ribbed. Um, and then I also figured out how to add the flap. Nice. That looks beautiful. So, yay. So this is my Franken pattern um, where I'm combining two different patterns to make this whole flap thing happen. And last time I was feeling a little concerned about the math of it all. <laughs> yes. And that turned out to actually, actually it was fine. It was fine until I got up to the decreases mm -hmm. and then I had to, the decreases for the, the very right. top of the hand. Uh, and at that point I had to rip it out twice because counting is too hard for me. <laughs> luckily it was only a few rows at that point. So it wasn't that big of a deal. And also luckily my sister-in-law has 
the same size hands and feet as I have, which makes it a whole lot easier yeah. to do this. Because otherwise, I mean, I've been like comparing this to my hand, comparing this to my existing mittens, and that's really what's enabled me to do these modifications and be confident that they will fit her. So yeah. one down. I haven't cast on the second one yet, but I will be doing that this week because I have some knitting friendly meetings ahead. Nice. Those look fantastic. Plus the second one will go faster because you don't yes. have to, you left good notes. So I did. And if I'm able to, I will put those in Ravelry when the entire project is done. I'll let you okay. know when I talk about the finished object. Um, if I'm able to do that one clearly and two without giving away anybody's secret sauce. Got it. That makes sense. All right. The last thing I'm working on surprise, surprise is a hat. But we're all shocked. For my go I know, all shocked. Um, so uh, this is just a seed stitch pattern out of bulky yarn. That it's is bulky. crazy bulky yarn. It's what is it? Size ten. Um, this is the Lemonade Shop, which is an indie. Um, she does all sorts of like rainbow splashes in her yarn, and it's beautiful. Um, she does things like based on clouds and rainbows, and. It's awesome. I really adore her yarn. She's very popular. She has a, her own shop, like brick and mortar, I think. But it's called, the colorway is called Toxic Oreo. Awesome. So you can see it a little bit here, better here. So it has definitely white with black speckles, Oreo. And then there's these crazy neon rainbow. And I just, I had to stop today before, as I was working on it so you could see kind of how this neon rainbow works. That is so pretty. It is so awesome. I love it. <laughs> it oh, makes me unbelievably happy. I cast <laughs> this on last night. Like the yarn arrived la yesterday and I cast it on last night. And this is as far as I got. And I am savoring this. This is nice and squishy. Um, I'm not using any pattern. I basically cast on 72 stitches, did a two by two rib. And then because I wanted to do seed stitch without having a marker, I just increased one stitch when I got to the body of the hat and then you just do knit pearl and pearl all the way around. Um, and then when I go get ready to do the decreases, I'll decrease one stitch and then it will be fine. Um, but yeah, I love how this yarn is turning up in the texture. Seriously. Like I love this section. It's just really fun. crazy insane. And it's just ridiculous enough to make me happy. Um, I'm finding right now. And as we kind of go into our topic that I would like to talk about that I propose to talk about. Um, I, I had kind of got in a bit of a knitting rut even before we were supposed to record last episode. And so I just, nothing, none of my whips were intriguing to me. I tried to get ideas to cast on, but nothing was really grabbing my attention. And I think part of it was, um, you know, it was really blah weather out. I think that's the nicest way. Um, I will see if I can drop in a picture here of what I currently see, even though it's a sunny day today. Um, we've been getting so much snow, which is fine. It's just white and gray and brown. And that's a little bit depressing to see every day. <laughs> and so I find that I get in January and February in particular, I get starved for color. Yeah. And I'm, um, and I'm not quite happy with my knitting, I guess. I feel like I'm getting in a, I get in a rut and I get stuck. And I noticed that specifically in January, January and February when it's all gray that I just noticed that a little bit more. I was wondering, do you, I should say, even though gray is one of my very favorite colors and I wear it a lot and I knit with it quite a bit when it's all around me and that's all I'm seeing when I'm looking out windows, I, I get really kind of down about it. Um, is there a time of year that you find that you get stuck? I'm just curious. Do you feel that way at all? I mean, so I agree with you on sort of the gray season and the brown season like for me it's less the january february and more when things start to melt and things oh. are just like like it's just mud everywhere yeah. <laughs> because the green hasn't grown back yet so like that's a harder season for me got I it say. 
I find I agree with you because it's just damp and gross but I find we get a lot more sun and so I can at least be outside so I'm okay with that stomping in the mud puddles I get that too yeah um so I thought I would I thought we should talk about getting knitting mojo back and how do you fix this issue because I feel like it affects everybody at one time or another where they just kind of feel stuck they don't yeah. quite know where to go so things that I did and that, that I <laughs> that I worked my way through I kind of have a list of things I work my way through to see if that will kind of get me out of it and uh, jolt me out of it is really what it is and then um kind of what finally worked so the first thing that I did was I looked through my yarn and my stash to see what inspires me and it didn't <laughs> <laughs> usually like I can go through sock stash or like sock yarn stash or some of my bulkies. I really like looking at bulky yarn because they are, it's a quick fix. And so, you know, you can finish that project pretty quickly. Hence the hat I'm working on. And that wasn't what I had was nice and squishy, but it wasn't right. Does that make sense? Like it just wasn't correct. So the other thing that I did was I looked through patterns and I looked through my library and my queue and my favorites. I printed out a whole bunch that I thought might be interesting to work on um, in a variety of things from shawls and lace and cables. Um, and that's actually where the familiar shawl came from because I was working through that. And I did it. I did the familiar shawl because eh, it got me through it. But again, it's a bulky weight yarn. Um, okay. And that didn't. And those patterns didn't quite get me, I guess. I printed out several, I had some ideas, but nothing really made me passionate and excited, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the next thing that I did was I went to my LYS and um, looked around at what their samples are and what kind of new yarns they have in. And I had been, it had been just enough time since I had been in previously that they had gotten a whole bunch of new yarn in and nice. some new samples up. And so that was really nice. And that's how I got into the true North two hats. Hence this series. And I worked on them and I was, I'm like, okay there, but I just, it, I felt fairly neutral about it. Right. So, um, the last thing that I did was I'm like, I'm going to shop for some yarn and see what I have. Cause then it usually comes down to color. And so that's how the toxic Oreo happened. And then I also ordered, so this is going to be my next cast on. Um, this is by Nitty and color. That's it, fun. It's totally blowing out the camera. So it's speckly, but also crazy neon. <laughs> um, this is called neon Lotus and this is in the worsted base. And so I love, this is quite opposite the color from the, any of the colors that I see on a regular basis. So um, this is going to knit up into a hat for a friend who has this color hair, actually. Um, she just had surgery, and so she's uh, normally a very active person, but she's on essentially bed rest for another, I think it, it will be a total of four to six weeks. And so just enough to drive her nuts so I thought this would be fun for me to knit on and it would be a great gift for her because there is no way I would actually wear this as a, <laughs> let's be realistic but I know that she would so you know as long as I go with bright colors and definitely not neutrals I find that that most of the time will get me out of it um other things that I usually will look at are like interesting textures of yarn so like obviously I'll want something soft and cozy or a different brand of yarn that I've never worked with before or something of that nature usually will get me out of it too. So like tactilely, it will help me out. Yeah. Um, so colors are definitely the way to go for me. I was wondering what works for you on how, cause you're not a neon knitter. I'm not, although I'm thinking I maybe want to be. <laughs> and so, you know, the neon hat that you made for Everett, yes. the, the highlighter hat, he loves it. That's his go-to winter hat, just yeah. so you know. Like, it's starting to show the love. Oh, that's great. I have yeah. more of that yarn, so I can easily make him another one. So and it's very cute because he has a bright blue jacket, bright red mittens, and then the hat is sort of like a yellowy green highlighter color yeah. that Katie striped, um, did like one row stripes with gray. And so it's just, it's an adorable look. I do have an orange 
highlighter color if he is interested in that. Oh, he loves orange. So that's also a possibility. You surprise him. I love it no matter what. <laughs> yeah, so those types of things I think are fun to pair in. Somebody will wear them at some point. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead. I think, keep talking about I think I need to do more of that. Okay, so I haven't had a ton of knitting mojo. Like, I, ha- I don't have a lot of, like, up, down, up, down. Like, you're talking okay. with the seasons or that sort of thing. Like, mine have been more with sort of seasons of life. Okay. So, like, I I was working at the local yarn shop in Duluth for several years. Mm-hmm. And then I moved away to do my PhD. And so, like, I didn't have a yarn shop because I didn't know the community at all. I didn't have a whole lot of time because PhD. And I didn't really have much expendable income because PhD. <laughs> so, um... Like, that was a time, like, those first few years of of that grad program, I definitely had decreased knitting mojo. Um, and then I also, like, when when I was on an academic calendar for teaching yeah. and for studenting, like, I definitely knit more in the summers. Because Me too. Because I would have, like, way more time to knit <laughs> instead of a whole bunch of knitting. That's, um, I agree with that. I also knit more in the summer um, because yeah. I have more time. Mm-hmm. yeah and it's great like we've got air conditioning it's fine <laughs> I've knit blankets in the summers I've knit color work sweaters in the summer it's all good um so I was yeah I was in kind of a rather for probably two or three years something like that where I just like I was still knitting but it wasn't the everyday thing that it has been most mm-hmm. other times since I started knitting So I bounced back a lot when I started to listen to podcasts and watch podcasts because then I felt like, okay, even though I don't have like a community here, I have like people. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) That made me feel better and feel like more connected. So Katie sent me a whole bunch of podcasts to start listening to. (laughs) That was really helpful. Uh, And then finding the, um, the Harry Potter knitting and crochet house cup on Ravelry was big too and like meeting other people there and the game aspect of crafting so like well the thing I really like about the knitting and crochet house cup the Harry Potter that series of (laughs) what those ones Uh, (laughs) so the reason I really like that is that you can start a project but it doesn't get let me like gather whips because you have to finish at least one thing in a month. And I find that when you can finish something that it gives me some motivation so that I don't feel like I'm completely dragging in the middle of all my projects. So I think like the gamifying it absolutely helps. And I understand that. Yeah, that worked really well. And I think I, like, I just needed ways to be social with my crafting. Cause like I had been at the shop every single weekend for years and then I had been teaching classes and stuff Um, and then all of a sudden I didn't have that and I didn't really have time to go and hang out at the yarn shop, even though for one year I literally lived above a yarn shop, like my apartment building shops underneath and there was a yarn (laughs) shop down there. And I still, like, I went and knit a few times, but it just like, it just didn't fit in or I don't know, it didn't work out for me. So I had to find other ways to kind of make it social. Yeah. But I guess for me, like, when I do have those periods of decreased knitting mojo, like, I don't worry about it a ton because if I'm not knitting, I'm probably doing something else that I enjoy. Like, I'm <laughs> leaning into another interest or another part of my life. And so, like, I have I just haven't really forced it I think that's a really good point. There's lots of stuff that I like doing. And so I'm okay with just like stepping back a little bit and trying out other stuff instead. Yeah. I think that's a really good point that it's not that when I kind of lose my knitting mojo, it's not that I'm sitting there and I don't know what to do. I find that I'll either read more. I actually read a couple of books, which during the school year, I don't often read full length fiction books. And I I was doing other things, just moving around and, but I missed like that tactile. Yeah. Uh, Gigi got many, many more pets. So she was okay <laughs> with that. Uh, she's just, oh, she heard her name. So she might come over. Um, <laughs> But, you know, like, there are other things that I'll shift to. And I I think you're right. I, I think it's important not to get anxious about it because I know it'll come back. 
It's just what's yeah. going to get me there. I am impatient though. And so I want to get out of that rut as fast as I can. Yeah. And so I, I know that's part of me that I'm okay coming back to it. I know that I'm going to get back to it and it's not going to be there. She was, she just, <laughs> so if it shook the table shook, I apologize. You won't make an appearance today either. It sounds like when, when you're not feeling it, you're missing it. Yes. Whereas when I haven't felt it, I'm not necessarily missing it. Like at times <laughs> I am, but I'm normally okay. Just like picking up something that I have going on because like I shipped a whole lot of UFOs with me <laughs> when I moved down to Pennsylvania. So I, it's not that I didn't have anything to knit. Like I didn't have a whole lot of money to spend on yarn, but I had a ton of UFOs and I had right. a substantial stash. So like there was stuff to work with if I wanted to. And I just kind of right. didn't feel like doing it, but it sounds like you want to be, and you're not inspired by what you have. Right. And so for me, yeah. it is, I have plenty of UFOs to work on but I've stopped on them for various reasons. And so it's really for me, I have to go back, force myself to pick something up and continue with it. Yeah. And even just looking through different bags will sometimes be enough to get me interested. And it just hasn't been the case that, oh yes, I'll go back and work on that beige weekender sweater. I want you to finish that. I know, I know. I do want to work on it. I mean, I've been watching Stranded Podcast and she's like almost done with her weekender sweater and she's done it in like two weeks and I'm just... Okay, actually speaking of her, um, she recently spun some yarn with sequins in it and I'm... (laughs) I I don't know why, but I need some. So if I find something with sequins, I'm getting it and you're going to spin it for me, Okay. (laughs) I have never Thank spun you. with sequins before. I've never done an art bag. Don't you want to? It well, was for like, you, I will. <laughs> it wasn't super art yarny though. Like, like the really intense art yarn, I'm yes. not such a fan of. But this was like a normal yarn that happened to have great colors and a and few sequins. sequins in it. And I think I need some. <laughs> okay. Please. Thank yeah, you. that was the other thing that I haven't done. Sometimes switching to a different craft. So you have... Yeah. You know, you also have sewing that you can go to and other things. And I, well, I don't have sewing, but I, usually I'll jump to spinning and trying that. But I didn't want to even set up my spinning wheel. It was weird. Yeah, so. I've been feeling the pull of some cross stitch projects. Ah, yes. Um, because I had done the one last summer. I had finished one that had been sitting forever. And I'm looking ahead and seeing what I have sort of planned out for my knitting for the next few months. And I also mm-hmm. have... Um, some travel and some conferences coming up that will be a lot of knitting time. And I, so I feel like I maybe don't have quite enough planned right now and I might turn to some cross stitch in the evening. Yeah. Equally meditative for me and just like chill and I can do it in my chair, which is really the issue with sewing right now. I have to go to a different chair. (laughs) Yes. I completely agree with that. I'm trying to see if she'll come over and say hello, and she's not about that. I agree with that. So what I wanted to do is I'm kind of selfishly starting an informal Cal, and by informal Cal, I mean no prizes. This is Instagram only, uh, but let's use that hashtag. No thread anywhere. This is like Instagram hashtag. Um, And I'm curious to know. I know in other areas it has to have more color than white, gray, and brown. And I really would like to see those colors, not only in what you're knitting, but even outside, I'd be all for it. So like people, when they're talking about in England, how they have like, oh, the daffodils are up and look like really you get this color green that I haven't seen since, you know, September. I'm not bitter, not bitter in any way. So you were bitter. (laughs) I'm proposing a cal where I'm, what I'm calling the brighten up the gray cal. And so the hashtag will be brighten up Cal and I'll put that just down here so you can see it. Um, So if you're working on any project that is in bright colors or if you look at it and you're like, this has more color than white, gray, and brown, (laughs) share it. Or if you are knitting it in a bright place. Oh yes, absolutely. Anything that will make us happy here in the frozen tundra of the North. (laughs) Please share. Please share. I really do appreciate <laughs> it. And Please. I don't, I won't look at us. it. 
<laughs> I won't look at it as like rubbing it in that we're getting these colors. Um, so for example, it's sending good vibes. It is really sending good vibes. I mean, cause I'm mean and cruel like that. So when I was down in the cities, I ate at my favorite Indian restaurant, which is amazing and delicious. And my partner really loves it. So he wasn't down there with me. So I sent him a picture of the menu <laughs> and didn't get him any leftovers. <laughs> So I'm not going to view it like you're that cruel. No. <laughs> but I'm just, share the color you have because it would be greatly Please. appreciated. Please. <laughs> so my next up is a hat out of this crazy color. So I'm curious to know what kind of colors you have in your stash or that you come across. Just any, give her some color, folks. Just like, any type of color. I'm Yes, and I'm going to share my next cast on in our next episode. I didn't bring okay. it with me today, but I've got some brightness ahead. Oh, that will be really, really exciting. Yeah. All right. Anything else? That does it for today. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. Use our hashtag, BrightenUpCal, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Like, actually see you in a couple weeks. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.